Through tough economic times, Grit TV has covered the resilience of everyday people waiting for a recovery. But what would a different economy look like? One example is the worker-owned cooperative, where workers share ownership of the business and an equal voice at work. To learn more, Grit TV partnered with TESA, the Toolbox for Education and Social Action, to create a half-hour documentary that we'll distribute for free. We'll also post additional resources online. Own the change. Building economic democracy one worker co-op at a time isn't an abstract how-to instructional film. It's full of worker owners from around this country and the world speaking about their own experiences. Here's a little of what we heard. Well, number one, we own a share of the business. We get, we share out um, part of the surplus, the financial surplus that is made at the end of the year in good years. So each worker gets a slice of that pie. At a time during the Great Recession where most people were losing jobs or being laid off, there's a lot of destabilization happening economically, we were actually growing and hiring people. And that caught the attention of local politicians. It took basically almost a year between the conception of the idea to when we launched. At the beginning we had to, we were meeting almost on a weekly basis. Um, mostly via conference calls, just because we have small baby. We had a small baby. We still have small babies. We got our EIN number um, shortly after we started, um, and then we said, "Okay, this is official, and we we're going to do this." Aorta practices everyday democracy in a lot of ways. Um, being a co-owner of a small business um, is a really intimate thing. <laughs> And so we, first of all, are structured, our organizational structure is that we're all equal. We function uh, on a consensus basis. We share tasks and responsibilities uh, to, the, to, the, to the greatest extent that makes sense. We also believe in specialization and support one another. There were a couple issues that Union Cab faced uh, when starting that, had they gone a different way, would have resulted in the failure of the enterprise. Um, the first one was just raising enough capital. They couldn't just go get a bank loan because banks and credit unions don't recognize collective borrowers. You can't start up a worker-owned cooperative with the idea that you're gonna make money right now. You have to start up a worker-owned cooperative with a vision of 10, 15 years from now, what you wanna leave. One of the biggest challenges that a lot of cooperatives face is they haven't really spent enough time thinking through the their business model, their business strategy. It's really understanding the revenue structure. How is it that you're going to make money? It's understanding the customers. What are the problems, like what is the problem or the need that you need to solve for someone? Because you need to create value for someone else in this business. And if it doesn't, then the business doesn't exist. It doesn't, it's not gonna survive in the long run. And even thinking through problems together of what kinds of um, what, what kind of role are we playing in movement building as, as um, serving our purpose for building capacity for groups who are cooperatives or supporting the solidarity economy and working towards social justice. I would say the biggest factor for success for a co-op during the start-off phase, it again, uh, it is rooted in this, um, the relationships of the founders and the understanding and agreement they have with each other and their level of um, education and training on number one how to run the business you know so there's just purely the business thing that any business needs to be successful but number two the, the democratic uh, processes and structures um, that they're going to need moving forward to make the co-op be uh, a successful cooperative democratic business. I'm somebody who does economic democracy. I'm somebody who does cooperatives. Um, and I want to see cooperative development um, lift up communities throughout the Delaware Valley, throughout my region. We move from land ownership to home ownership. And it's time we move to workplace ownership. I was in another form of a cooperative, but it wasn't my cooperative. And it was called sharecropping. I come from sharecroppers, and now I have my own company, and it feels so great. It feels so good.